in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. Welcome back to another Instagram Live, and we're here with another episode of Jimmy Ranch. JimmyRance.com is the website. If you want to engage live in the content, you got to go follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A. Right side. All right, I think I'm live. Am I there? Am I moving yet, Christine? Uh, you start moving. I started moving. Fro- frozen again. <laughs> I froze again. This is going to be horrible at Jimmy Rants if I can't move. I wonder. We had five bars. Yeah. Can you guys see me if you can? Say hello. Say hello to my little friend. That's funny. I've been doing lives on the Wi-Fi on the ship all week. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been doing them all week. I did one the other night at dinner. It seems to be moving Is it on? a little bit better now. Yeah. It's on soon. If you guys can see me, we're going to start here soon. Hey, Keto Coach Lauren. If only I could see you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to assume you guys can see me, and it's clear, and we are starting the Jimmy rant. So um, uh, my friend Kimberly says much better. Okay. Well, let me start again, because this is Jimmy rants, and we have a historic episode here today, you guys, because I have four, count them, four different people here with me to talk about a very controversial episode uh, of Jimmy rants, because you guys... Hello from one foot away. (laughs) Um, You guys have heard a lot out there in the keto world about these things called carb up. So supposedly there are days that you need to carb up for the purposes of helping with strategically building muscle and maybe balancing hormones. I've heard every excuse under the sun why people should carb up. So I have a bunch of experts here today that want to talk about and debunk why carb ups may not be as necessary as you think they are. Of course, you know this guy. What's that, Mignon? The man, the myth, the legend. That is Keto Savage, Robert Sykes. What's up, buddy? I got some crazy windblown hair. Yes, we love we love the Elvis Presley hair or uh, uh, who is that? James Dean hair. James yeah, there you go. Yes, indeed. And then we have his brand new wife, Crystal. The better half. The better half. She is the super, lady super savage. Sunburn. Super sunburn lady savage. Super sunburn. And then we have Keto Coach Lauren. Hi. So all three of you guys, and then the lovely and the beautiful and the talented Christina Wiener. Hey. So um, all three of you guys have built muscle. Have you ever done any carb ups, any of the three of you? Not in the last five years. Okay, so talk about when you used to carb up. And I got it. Uh, talk about when you used to carb up and then why you stopped doing it and what were the results. All right, so before I even started keto, it's pretty typical to follow a traditional bodybuilding bro diet approach where carbs your primary fuel source. You're carving up before you lift. You eat carbs after you train. There are some benefits there if you're following a typical approach and you're doing glycolytic exercises. But once you adapt to ketogenic lifestyle, you don't have to focus so much on replenishing the glycogen stores. Your body can adapt and do that naturally with the food you're consuming especially the longer you stay in ketosis and the more adapted you are. Having been strict keto now for five years in a row, my body is very efficient at using fat as my primary fuel source, and my lifting has only improved. So there's been no decrease in performance whatsoever. Now, Crystal, for you uh, as a woman and as a woman who bodybuilds, uh, a lot of people have fallen for, oh, I need those carbs in order for that muscle to develop. But you can see she's pretty badass because she's got great muscle. Um, And you won a competition last year without really needing to do any carb ups. Talk about why you think it pervades. Without doing any carb ups, like you you definitely don't need it. Um, I think we use a lot of fat refeeds. And Talk I, about what that is. Uh, that was just more of like once my calories got pretty low for a competition prep for a figure, um, you lower your calories little by little. But at the end, you want to do a fat 
refeed, which is pretty much just increasing your fat a quite, uh, I guess 30%. Anyways, a, a percentage as well, just a little bit of protein um, with some salt, and that actually helps fill out your muscles just as well as you would if you were um, using carbs. Um, and then when I very first actually started keto, I had a hard time giving up my carbs and doing a carb refeed was my way of trying to have them yeah. and it would lead me into a binging spree. So I said after the first little bit of keto, I was like, no more, I won't have any more. So for over you know, two and a half years, I haven't had any carb meals at all. Right. And not necessary. So, Lauren, I'm going to come a little closer because my arm is stretched to its fullest next to Crystal. So, all right. So, why do you think it's so uh, pervasive, the carb ups? Why do you think people buy into that in the ketogenic community? Because it seems to be the very antithesis of being ketogenic to be carbing up. I just think that it's a way for people to um, get by with having carbs and, like, if they've missed them. Is it back to addiction, you think? Possibly. So for me, I think that there are people who abstain and there are people who can moderate. And so I abstain from all carbs that used to fuel my binge eating disorder. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it's just, it's a way for people to, I don't know what the word it is that I'm looking for, but just to kind of like slide by like mm -hmm. use it as an excuse like oh i'm using these carbs to build muscle um i could have them or i'm using these carbs to um you know balance my hormones and there's there's totally different ways so, I can't, can't so no pause due to awesomeness right no. <laughs> so um you think it's an excuse that they use or i guess something that they fool themselves into believing yeah. that they have to do this when they don't really have to do it why why do you think the alternative is not being spread loud enough? That's for any of you. Uh, because I haven't taken the gloves off yet. But I'm about to take the gloves off. Uh-oh. Keto Savage is about to go savage on you. I, I also, I feel like there's a lot of people promoting it and not enough people fighting. Promoting carb yes. ups? Right, promoting yes. carb ups and not enough people saying, I don't need them. I've, I haven't had them in forever, so why, why would you need it? Um, I know it's really, really big on healing hormones right now, mm -hmm. and I have not personally seen any real studies or uh, anything done on like a person I like specifically know of that the reason they healed their hormones was because of the carbs. Um, I'm personally... Well, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. like Crystal. No. If I can do it without doing carb ups, because I don't think... Okay. Miss NTP. What are your thoughts about carbing up? Is it part of bio-individuality where carb ups are a good idea for everybody? Um, this, this is tough because we are taught bio-individuality, but I see it if uh, most people have some sort of blood sugar dysregulation. And by doing these carb ups, you're getting yourself out of ketosis and depending on how much you have going on, it could take you a long time to get back into ketosis and get that fat burning. And coming from a, um, I don't bodybuild or anything like that, but I mean, it would make sense to me. You're in ketosis, you're in a fat burning state. You have the carbohydrates and that just throws your body out of ketosis. And so your body is kind of confused as to which fuel that it's burning and so why even do the carb ups i mean you're you're it's it's just it seems like counterintuitive to me right i mean fat um, fat is the preferred fuel source for the heart um and the muscles and the muscles so i mean why why would you switch to um sugar so it's like going from an inferior fuel over to a super fuel and it seems to me that in the bodybuilding world where you live, <laughs> that the typical diet shouldn't be the carb ups. It should be what you do and practice. Yeah, I've got I've got three concepts to, to kind of portray a little background to lay here. So if you're eating carbs on occasion, keto on occasion, but you're totally happy with where you're at, totally content with your composition, don't mess health, with it. Then more power to you. I'm yeah. not sitting here trying to judge you for having carbs. Exactly. No problem with me whatsoever. If you're touting yourself as a strict ketogenic dieter and that's what you're portraying to your audience and then you are secretly having a whole bunch of carbs 
and not being honest about that. That, to me, is akin to a bodybuilder that touts himself as a natural athlete and then is taking steroids behind the scenes, which mm-hmm. I do not have any time for and I don't respect. Right. I, don't, I don't get down with that. The third concept is there's a group of people that suggest that you have to have carbs in order to build muscle and improve your performance. And I want to be a voice that says, look, I haven't had carbs in five years. I've been able to put on more muscle. I'm able to improve my performance. My blood markers have all improved. I want to be an outlier that's not even an outlier because I'm not – like if I can do it, other people out there can do it as well. So I want to portray that there's an alternative to having carbohydrates as your primary fuel source without sacrificing your performance. That's what I'm trying to get across. So ladies, how do you communicate to a woman who is in your situation that wants to build muscle – uh, but is hearing all these things about carb ups, especially for women, how do you convince them that they don't need as many carbs? And maybe share about, like during prep, flex on how them. you ate. What you say, flex a flex little bit? Flex, flex on them. On them. <laughs> but uh, how you ate during your competition lead up. Now you were training for one, yep. um, and 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 you did one. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about like what that was in the day to day. I'm gonna hand you the oh, camera okay. so you can. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to talk with no, me? You go, yeah, oh. go ahead. No. Okay. So my meals mostly consisted of ground beef. Um, I usually try my best to do like pasture raised, um, grass fed, all the good stuff. Um, and then eggs, and my favorite was, thanks, my shaky. Uh, my favorite no, I just was, need some position now. like, just to put some extra mushrooms on top for flavor and salt. That was generally almost all that I ate. And then I had coffee with um, cream and maybe a fat bomb or a keto brick or something like that. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I was under 10 grams of total carbs my entire, wow. which was 22 weeks. So, I, I mean, I did it. And I, you could have gone zero if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, and the, actually the last couple of weeks we knocked it down to five grams of total carbs. But right, I remember those, that. Yeah, and those extra carbs that's from like things that had my electrolytes in it or maybe like one from an egg or something like that. Nominal. So they weren't coming from rice or like no. real hearty vegetables or anything like that. Not saying that you can't have vegetables, but um, it's just not necessary to cut or to build with mm-hmm those extra carbs is just not necessary I mean I've done literally I started lifting after I st- or right before I started keto so all the muscle that I have built has been from the ketogenic diet mm-hmm. now Lauren Which you went for me absolutely you, yeah. you went yeah. through this yeah. comp- this kind of prep for a competition but didn't actually do this competition but at some point you had some followers of yours mm-hmm. that kind of called you out okay this is kind of extreme Lauren you're yeah. going low in calories yeah. and how did you uh, kind of overcome some of that negativity you were getting? Oh, just carb up and you'll get, you'll feel better. Uh, what kept you going? Well, so I, I stay typically anywhere between like 20 to 25 total carbs a day. But then when I'm doing something like that, it's like 10 and under usually. Right. Um, maybe what did 15. It look like? uh, what it looked like for me was, um, well, during, I know what it looks like. During, that's all your meals. During the prep that I was yeah. doing, I was doing all meat. And so at, at some point it was like zero carb, five carb, which did not resonate well with my body. Um, and, threw my hormones all out of whack so talk about that a little more so I um am after the fact after things didn't work out I uh had some issues and lost my cycle um and found out that I am estrogen dominant and so I was lacking progesterone also um with the fact that I was doing all meat I was not able to um balance that uh, so when I started adding in vegetables like leafy greens, um, adding in like Brazil nuts, things like that that were naturally higher in progesterone and um, ab- the leafy greens that would absorb the estrogen, um, things started balancing back out. Yeah. I ended up actually getting my cycle back once I started adding those things in. I got crazy hair, like always. She likes to talk about her hair. <laughs> Why would I expect any different on Jimmy Rants? I thought it was crazy. Um, so when I went back to my normal ketogenic diet, not with like, you know, crazy carbs to get my cycle back, but balancing my food choices and not just sticking to just meats and fats, um, I was able to get my cycle back. So on the whole topic of balancing your hormones, there are people out there that are promoting that you have to carb up over like 
60, 50, or 60, 80, 100, like more carbs than you need um, to balance your hormones, and that's just not true. I've been able to do it with under like 30, sometimes 50 total, and I always count total. So um, it just, you have to focus on the foods you're actually putting in your body, where the carbs are coming from. Like I, I wouldn't do anything crazy like go have like a donut as a carb up or, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I love donuts. But, um, like, extra zucchini or asparagus or leafy greens or nuts, things that are actually going to work in sync with your body and regulate your hormones naturally. So. Nice. All right, since you brought up the hormones, Christine, I know you're chomping at the bit <laughs> to give some comments about that because you learned all about the endocrine system mm -hmm. in your training as an NTP. Yeah. What do yeah. you think? So one of the main points that we are taught um, – is that it's impossible to regulate your blood sugar uh, or regulate your hormones if your blood sugar is going crazy and so that's where these carb ups can be a problem because your blood sugar is is being spiked and and so stressing out the adrenals and and so yeah if you're having these carb ups then this it's probably going to result in some hormonal issues and so the best way to fix the hormonal issues is do exactly what Lauren said if you're one of those people that needs some vegetables or nuts or something go for it I mean that's that's why we are taught bioindividuality because not all my clients are the same I have one client that's doing carnivore um, I have another that's you know doing more vegetables um, but still doing the meat so you just have to listen to your body and I, I think that um, yeah, the first and foremost thing, if you're doing those carb ups, your blood sugar is going to be messed up, and that's just going to throw everything off. Right. So, guys, the bottom line in this Jimmy Rance is our carbohydrate uh, carb up, excuse me, uh, necessary. I almost tripped over my wife's foot. Uh, <laughs> necessary to grow muscle. Come on. Muscle like and to. Shh, I'm trying to finish this show. <laughs> Build muscle and balance hormones. Ricky and Lucy thing going over here on a low carb ketogenic diet. And I think what you're hearing here today is it depends, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be doing carb ups. I can tell you that though. No. No, no I won't be. No. <laughs> nope. Nope. I don't agree with them personally. Nah, to the, ah, uh, to the no, no, no. All right. Let's see what you guys have to say. Thanks for being here today. We are actually on the low carb cruise. That's why I got all these superstars all around me. So thank you guys for being here. Oh, sure. uh, let's see. I ate some tater tots that are low in carbs over the past couple of days, said Gerald. My glucose shot up to 160. Yeah, no kidding, brother. Going, oh, back, no. going back to keto and stuff like that, that no more SHIT. It scared <laughs> it, me to have to death. So, okay. Um, tater tots would not be the chosen carb, right, if you wanted to carb up anyway. Yeah, yeah we, we do have a recipe for that in the ketogenic cookbook, <laughs> yep. zucchini tots, uh, keto neogenesis. What's up, Beth? Probably going to get cut off based on the subject. Curious why Danny Vega and Drew Manning like to carb up when science is showing that ketones and fasting is more efficient for big workout. Curious to what you guys think, and I'm not going to have you say anything bad about your colleagues, but any kind of general thoughts about why others buy into this when you don't? I don't know. I mean, I think the fact that I've been strict keto for as long as I have, I think that's really set the stage for my body to truly become efficient at using fat as the primary fuel source. Like, I'm not giving a whole bunch of convoluting fuel sources into my body. Like, it's just really dialed into running on fat and ketones. And I continue to PR every time I lift. Not every time I lift. Personal but, records PR. Yeah, every, I mean, I, I continue to PR year over year over year I build muscle every year that passes and I'm not having any issues whatsoever in the absence of carbohydrates so is there an adaptation way. period where people should say okay let me work on getting adapted to keto before you jump ship and think about carb ups yeah I mean the cool thing about it is every month that passes you become more and more efficient but if you're throwing in a bunch of carbs intermittently that's just gonna postpone that adaptation so I noticed a pretty significant improvement after six months, I've noticed that, that enhanced improvement after two years. I mean, mm -hmm. it just keeps getting better and better. So play the long game and live the lifestyle that you know is going to be best for your long-term health. And there were two women mentioned in that comment, or two men, excuse me, mentioned that comment, but a whole bunch of women oh, are out there yeah. saying this. You two are kind of in the minority, mm -hmm. uh, and yet 
it seems like carb ups has kind of taken over the conversation when it comes to women. I think that it's just a popularity thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a, I'm doing it because other people are doing it and I want to see it if like what the excitement is and I want to see if it really works. And I think it's a lot of hype. Mm -hmm. I think that people build it up in their head and they think that it's working or it's benefiting them, but really it's just, it's all hype Mm -hmm. and it's in your head. And there really is no science that supports doing carb ups. I've not seen a randomized control clinical trial that shows any veracity in it. When that happens, I'll take a look at it. But it's 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 just sad that so many women are falling for it. It's kind of like the whole notion that women shouldn't fast. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of women that do just fine fasting. Mm -hmm. And so carb ups and this fasting issue seem to be in that same category. Oh, yeah. 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 (laughs) I agree. No, I agree. And I think that there's – everyone has their own individual body. Everyone's going to do better on one thing more than the next person. But I I don't personally think that that's going to benefit anyone in particular. And I just – I mean, I do. I I agree with Lauren. I think Mm -hmm. it's a lot about the hype. I think it's the popular thing right now. And I think it's a very popular thing that is screwing with a lot of people's Mm -hmm. bodies. And I don't think that that's okay. Um, Now – you're talking about specific people, and I'm not ever going to say anything about them because I love them, but um, I think that everyone's allowed to experiment with whatever the heck they want, and as you know, someone who might be an influencer and might be like trying different things, they're not specifically telling you you have to do this. They might be saying, like, this is what I'm doing. Look at this option. Right, right, right. And they're allowed to put out whatever they want in this world, and that's totally fine. Um, But just take it with a grain of salt. Just, like, look at maybe what's happening. Look at all the different sides of things and don't just say, oh, I'm going to do that because so-and-so did. Everyone has a different body type. Everyone has, you know, different muscle masses. There's a lot that goes into it. So just be aware of what you're choosing to do off of what someone says. You want you want to know what I think this is. I think keto has become so popular that there's anybody and everybody trying to latch onto it. I mean, that's why Jillian Michaels did what she did yes. coming out against it. She's associated with keto saying negative things. Then everybody's having their own version of keto. So, oh, well, if you want to do keto the right way, you carb up. And so it's just another way for people to refine it and define and yeah, what the I would say what mischaracterize it. I mean, <laughs> what version of keto are you like? I didn't know there's so many different versions out there. Like well, keto is pretty. There's different ways to do things for the individual. Yes. To make it more sustainable, but I mean keto, in essence, is not allowing for massive carbohydrate. Right. You know, that's that's not keto. You know. Well, the last time I checked, it's defined as low carb, moderate protein, high fat, mm-hmm. and mostly real whole foods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like, why are we letting people obfuscate the issue? saying, well, higher protein, and there's people out there promoting muscle growth with higher protein, which you could, but again, it goes back to what you were saying a while ago, you know, those people are choosing to have more protein. Um, It's the same as the people that are choosing to carb up. It's the same mechanism that's causing the muscle growth, but at some point, is that the most efficient way they could do it? Not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it all goes back to self-experimentation, you know, figure out what works best for you be in tune enough with your body that you can read into what your body is telling you don't bounce around based simply off of what the next big thing is the next hype is like it takes time for you to get accurate feedback from your body like anytime i introduce a new experiment i typically let it simmer for months before i make a, a educated decision on you mean how thinking it, about it like like when i'm trying something like when i'm doing like a higher protein ratio yeah. or a higher fat ratio you stick with it a while i stick with it for a while okay so good accurate feedback on what it's actually doing i mean you can't know with certainty what something's going to have on a long-term basis if you just do it for a weekend and then you know claim that as as gospel you know you have to give it time although i will tell you i did a three to one protein to fat ratio and you you said jimmy that's the traditional bodybuilding diet uh yeah, last good. year yeah. and and i did and i had 15 bouts of hypoglycemia in one week Every doctor I talked to said you should have ended it like the second or third mm-hmm. hypoglycemia. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to at least give it a week so you'd have that proper amount of time. And again, listen to your body and it won't lie to you. Yep. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. Mic drop. <laughs> All right, let's see. Next uh, comment. Hey, y'all, says Brittany. What's up, Brittany? Real food, real life. Uh, not just those two others as well that came to mind first. No judgment. Truly curious why they would do that. Yeah, so we answered that. Carbs make me crash. Yeah, they do a lot of us. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. They make me binge. Yep. So I choose not to have them in my life. Yep. And I think that's body awareness. Um, and I, I know, Lauren, you told me earlier, somebody was like, you sound like you're really in tune with your body. I'm like, that would be the highest compliment in the world if somebody told me I was very in tune with my body. Yeah, I'm just, I'm self-aware. I know what my triggers are. I know what what works for me and what doesn't. And so I'm just, I, I like that heightened sense of knowing who I am and what works for me. Yeah. Uh, that's such a great room of motivation you have with. <laughs> yeah, charming confessions. You have an idea. This is the creme de la creme here. Kitty Caddick says, carb ups can improve glycogen storage, but since being fat adapted, who cares about that? I don't care. You don't care. <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah. need glycogen storage. I love Kitty Caddick. She's one of my favorites. Yeah. She's the one that gave us our strawberries. Yeah, they're still thriving. They oh, are my. thriving. Yes, yes. Uh, pure lean mass gain with keto from my 10 years of experience at the gym. Yep. Can we talk about how to get a pump on here? Pump it up. Just take some salt. You do not need to carb up for a pump. You got to say right? it like that, though. Salt. So you got to yeah. get salt. salt. <laughs> you got to get that Graham, North Just Carolina out. Salt. I mean, I feel like we get that question a lot. It's like, yep. I don't feel as pumped up. I don't feel as, like, big as I can be in the gym. Just take some Um, I do have one thing is... <laughs> You don't really need to look crazy yeah. huge when yeah. you're in the gym. You're in there to do weight lifting, and the pump is your blood pump going to those muscles. But if you're working those muscles, your blood will be in there. Mm -hmm. You're you don't have as much like volume because you don't have those glycogen stores and you don't have all the water and everything in mm -hmm. in those cells. So it's okay to not be like I don't I'm huge. huge. I'm not huge. I'm like I, yeah, I mean you if you're working the muscle, you're going to be gaining muscle like right. you don't have to worry about like trying to look good for everyone else in the gym right yeah. what about I creatine i still get pretty good pumps and yeah, i don't have true. carbs i mean i don't have a problem with the pump. what about um, creatine you need creatine's that it's good you don't have to have it by any means it's like a very finite d difference there's been a lot of research that shows it could be good for your cognitive uh enhancement as well but you know if you take creatine the main thing is you know take it consistently like if you take it for a week and you get off of it, you're not really going to get any of the benefits there's enough research that shows there is some benefits but you don't have to have it by any means. Yep. All right. Any other good comments here? I have zero need for carbs ever, says Lone Star Keto Girl. Yeah, a lot of us have kind of drifted towards carnivore, and I know you do kind of mostly carnivore. Uh, both of you ladies have tried it, but you haven't seen optimal results. Um, talk about why you didn't think you felt optimal. Because I think this is interesting. As part of this carb up dis discussion, some people would say, well, you tried carnivores to see no carbs is good, so you need to carb up. Mm. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was the fact that I was, um, I'm estrogen dominant and I lack progesterone. So, you know, I can't get the things that I need just from meat. Meat is a very nutrient dense food. Um, but I'm not someone who's going to eat nose to tail either. So, like, I'm not going to eat organ Even meat. after Danny's talk? Even after that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. But um, it, it just it just doesn't work for me. And also the fact that higher, higher protein to fat ratios. Like, you have to find out what works for you as far as your intake goes. So, um, I did higher protein. Um, I did not feel my best. I didn't feel optimal. I... It, it just didn't work for me. I tend to work better on higher fat and also incorporating um, le leafy greens and mm -hmm. things like that. So, And for myself, I did carnivore, but I did do it with a higher protein, and it was a much, much higher protein ratio, and that did not suit me well. And I, I generally, I eat mostly just meat um, and then I'll have it like one side of veggies during the day or you know I might have like some matcha or something mm -hmm. along those lines but it's nothing anything crazy the meat is going to be the bulk of my meal and then something on the side mm -hmm. um, and I have no problem with carnivore but for me that it was really uh, it was more restrictive for me mm -hmm. in my lifestyle so I like to have the variety of being able to have some, you know, broccoli or Brussels sprouts or whatever it is that I'm craving. Um, but I think the reason it didn't go so well for me was because I had such a high protein right. ratio. Would you so. try it again with a higher fat ratio? Yes. Yeah. And I've done it for like a week at a time or so. Yeah. Um, I just like the variety. Sure. So I would have no problem trying it with a higher fat and just seeing how it goes. But generally it's a little hard on my stomach. Right. That and the restrictiveness. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah. people always ask how you feel, how you don't feel restricted on keto. It's because you don't cut out absolutely everything that you enjoy. And right. I enjoy salads mm -hmm. and vegetables. So, yeah. 
So does this little lady over here. That's one reason you haven't tried carnivore, right? Is you just would miss yeah. vegetables too much. Uh, yeah, I love I love my vegetables. So, um, and and too, I have digestive issues. So doing an all carnivore thing would be hard on my digestion. Right. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. Well, what about the calorie says keto bobs? Do you have to have large surplus of calories? I'm assuming to build muscle, it's what he's referring to having a hard time mentally eating enough. Well, that's a common question just with keto uh, in general, but carb ups wouldn't mitigate that. No. Yeah, that's, that's a good question though, for sure. Like I would definitely put an emphasis on making sure you've got a caloric surplus. If your primary goal is to build muscle, you have to be taking in enough fuel for your body to be able to build more tissue. There's a lot of other factors at play. It's not all about calories by any means, but making sure you're taking in enough in order to really optimize your muscle growth is very important. I love how he's so chill. Yeah, I got this right, ma'am. Here we are. Yeah, we're just going to... All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, what what he said? On? Yeah, what he said. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the question about uh, large sal uh, calorie oh. Oh, surplus yeah, exactly. and mentally eating enough. Okay, so yes, absolutely eating enough on keto for muscle building is important, but um, also if it's related to carb ups, you're gonna get way more full eating carbs and not be able to eat enough calories. Fat is very high calorie and dense. Yes, so you're eat less. Yeah, so you're able to eat what you need to right. actually build the muscle. Right. So what I would suggest is if you're eating a lot of protein, try and increase your fat a little bit. You'll be able to get in those calories a lot easier, um, but I think I mean, you take a chunk of meat, and it's really not that high in volume, so it shouldn't be too, too hard right. to eat, you know, a couple slabs of meat, you know, a couple times a day. And if you need to, a lot of people are into fasting, which is wonderful. Fasting is amazing. But if you're trying to gain weight and you need to increase your meal times, it's okay to eat a couple times a day. It's not, You know, you don't have to do one meal a day just because everyone else is doing it. Mm -hmm. So increasing, you know, your to multiple meals, it is okay to do that if that's what you're kind of looking for, rather than going the fasting route, which a lot of people do. Right. Any mm -hmm. thoughts, Lauren? Mm -hmm. They hit the nail on the head. So. What they said. <laughs> All right. Extended fasting plus heavy weights can do the trick to control your hormones. So what you were just talking mm -hmm. about, that some people that works, other people it may not work. Also, increasing your glycogen storage can give you the illusion of bigger muscles mm -hmm. so people that are carb eaters they have bigger right. muscles but it's an illusion because it's packed mm -hmm. with the glycogen kitty katik you are on your game today my dear uh taylor says the rock post carb ups don't know why but he has a large following so when people like him do it others follow he's saying that's one of the reasons yeah. Yeah. carb ups have become popular what do you think about the rock well i guess i just gotta get on my game get more popular than the rock you know <laughs> <laughs> wwe look out if you smell what the savage is cooking. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, I mean, people, there's people with a lot of influence out there that they post what they eat. I mean, keto is not the, the, I mean, it's hot right now, but there's people that have a much bigger following that aren't keto. Right. They post their carb meals and people will take note of that. But that's, that's why we have the responsibility as influencers up and coming in the space to, to do our job and our responsibility to show the alternative measures and means you can live and see positive results. So that's what I'm trying to do. Well, and people like The Rock and even others that are out there that post like this, um, that we always forget, we're not all lemmings that were born with the same ability to grow muscle in the same way. And so some are gifted naturally, mm -hmm. genetically, to be able to grow muscle. Uh, and so they could carb up or not carb up, they're gonna be swole. Right. Whereas you've got other people like yourself, you were kind of scrawny at one point in your life. That was and definitely. Yeah, so yeah, I've seen some of the pictures, I'm like, whoa, it's like night and day from what you used to be to now. Mm -hmm. And so there's this whole mentality of cult of personality that comes into play in this discussion as well. Low Carb New Yorker says, I'm not a professional athlete, but I've been a gym rat for 30 plus years in the last two in particular, not eating carbs at all, and I'm still growing in muscle. So that's pretty good. Uh, Taylor wants to know if there's any suggestions for doing long distance hiking. What should you take? Who in the keto carnivore is doing long distance? Do you know anybody that does like long distance hiking mm -hmm. in keto? Uh, I mean, we we do. I, I love hiking. I love doing long Not distance long stuff. Distance. We aren't, we aren't into long distance, right. but we do have a lot of yes. our customers. That do <laughs> we'll be doing Working on it in, in yeah. your spare time. In our spare time. We got a whole bunch of that. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to sound a little bit biased here, but... 
if you want to go hike long distances, you want to have very shelf stable, calorically dense foods that are light. Like most, if only we had something like that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I may be a bit biased here, but I would recommend something like the keto brick because yes. it's a thousand calories, it's got a good fat ratio, and it's shelf stable. So you can throw one of those in your packs and be good for hours. Yeah. This is a company that uh, Robert and Crystal started, and it's just literally, it looks like a brick. Uh, and it's a thousand calories worth of the right ratio of fat, protein, and carbohydrates. And uh, what's the different flavors you got? Uh, we got cookies and cream, cinnamon crunch, and mocha cream, and they have a couple limited edition flavors that pop yes. up every couple months. But that, especially if you pair it with like a bag of keto friendly jerky to get you some protein in, yeah, I mean you'd be rock solid. Is it ketobrick.com? Ketobrick.com. Awesome. Awesome. I can vouch for them; they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I recently had a lady on the Living La Vida Low Carb Show. I'm blanking on her name, but go back through my archives on LLVLC on iTunes, and you'll see I spoke with a cross-country hiker. And she, I told her about your stuff. She's like, oh, my God, you're a godsend. So you're awesome. going to be getting a lot of orders from her and the cross-country people here soon. What signs did you notice that your hormones were going wacky? Oh, that's a good question, Lavender. So uh, what signs did you notice that your hormones were going wacky? Oh. Mm-hmm. You're the uh, perfect yeah. person. Both of so, you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I lost my cycle, um, my menstrual cycle. Um, I was experiencing, like, bouts of extreme tiredness. Um, my, like, gym performance was going down. But mainly my cycle losing that and then also like the emotions that were going on inside of me as well so um there were several different factors but the fact that i lost my cycle just really was the big thing for me because i've never had that happen were Um, you ever tempted at that point to start carving up because of the fear of losing the cycle um because it was out there as this will cure that somewhat yeah but i just I can't bring myself to do it because I feel so crappy on tons of carbs. So that's when I just brought back the things that I knew that my body, that agreed with my body in the amounts that are okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Crystal? Uh, for myself, I, I think it was like extreme tiredness. Uh, throughout the day, I would be super, super tired. I'd wake up tired. I'd wake up actually like in physical pain. Um, and I just knew for a long time that something wasn't right and I let it get to the point where it was really, really bad before I did anything about it. Um, but definitely like the tiredness, like I kept crashing in the middle of the day. My lifts like went down by like half the weight I was lifting, um, which was extremely frustrating to me, but I knew there was something more going on rather than it just being like a mental or physical like muscle thing. Um, so that's when I just, I decided to just test and see how it went and you know never knowing if that's what it is or not I actually tested my thyroid first it was totally fine tested everything else and then there was a whole bunch of different things going on that I needed to take care of but um I do also like question a lot okay so why why are we able to see what's going on and I honestly think it's the lack of carbohydrate and the good food that we're eating we're actually able to see what's going on inside our body better mm. and I, I mean that's not a like proven yeah. fact but I feel like we can see what's going on mm-hmm. and feel what's going on so much because your easier. body's more in tune exactly you're not right. inflamed with all of those crazy carbs yep. like you you literally are already healing with keto as your lifestyle and you are able to see what's going on that's wrong because you don't have all the, the noise in the background mm-hmm. from carbs hashtag crazy carbs right. yeah. we got to make that a thing all right, uh, bu- 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 bu. such an awesome crowd. Can't wait to join that cruise. You should, Kitty Caddick. This is your peoples. Uh, Let's go ahead and get my cycle back. I would. I know. <laughs> you married your cycle. That's what you did. I was instructed by my doctor to have protein to maintain and grow muscle and to heal a wound. No talk about garbage, says Olga. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Maybe things are changing slowly but surely. Uh, Coach Lauren, I think Robert Sykes, uh, and who is your third guest? Don't recognize her. That is Crystal. Ugh, that is. I'm the better half to that one. That is Mrs. Sykes now. Yes. Used to be Crystal Love. Used to be Crystal Love. But the Lady Savage. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Keto Savage. That's right. The Lady Savage. Keto Coach Lauren. Weirdo. Aww. Rebooting Aww. your nutrition. Okay. That's who's here. 
Carb ups, no thank you, says Ketoholic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, even when I'm meat heavy, favoring carnivore eating this way, there's no way to eat so much protein because the meals are just uh, feeling so full anyway. Yeah, exactly, no low carb New Yorker. I don't carb up, I steak up, says Griff Sam. Yay. <laughs> steak up. That's the way to do it. That's another hashtag, Sam. Thank you for that one. What a group and all that knowledge in one place. Yeah, we're in we're in our room. It's cool. Uh, yes, we are listening to our bodies and doing what makes us feel better. You should. If I'm tired at 4 p.m., I just pop some salt. So there's the salt yeah, you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, why would I want to add in carbs back when I work so hard to get off of them for yes. good, says Mama Ors. Yes. So, uh, in May, got leaner, sticking to it till I hit my goal weight. Ten pounds more to go. You got this. Um, Savage, as in Randy Macho Man Savage. Oh snap! Into a Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Snap into a keto brick in this case. So, uh, those bricks rock. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, who does that Human Performance Outliers podcast with Sean Baker? That is Zach. So go check out Zach Bitter. He is a long distance runner. Yes. You guys know Zach Bitter? Yeah, I know my show. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, how long does it take for your hormones to get regulated after you adjust their, your diet, says Coastal Mom? So that's another question for the ladies, I think. Yeah, I don't actually know a timeline. I think it's going to be different. It's going to yeah. yeah, it's going to be different for everyone. depends on what hormone you're talking about. A lot of people think it's just like estrogen, progesterone, things like that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other things like cortisol and thyroid insulin. and insulin and yeah. all the things. It depends on what you're working with. It depends on how long you've let it kind of go and not be at optimal levels. And yeah, I, I think it also depends on what you're doing. If you're going from carbs to keto, um, it might take you a little bit longer to adjust and get into ketosis. Um, but I mean, that's that's the best I know. I can't give you a timeline exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, I, it, I lost my cycle and felt all crappy for about six months. And then after re um incorporating things and um you know getting my calorie intake back up as well because that's a big part of it too mm -hmm. is if you're in a calorie deficit for an extremely long period of time that can affect your hormones as well so um it took me a good almost three months to finally get my cycle back into about month two i started feeling normal again um but yeah i mean it depends on what you're trying to heal and in, in your body so yep. Any thoughts, Robert? Uh, 57 days, 3 hours, 42 minutes, and 13 seconds. There's a wise guy in every group. <laughs> All right. Christina Reiner, yeah, NTP. Yeah, thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah. I would totally agree with what Crystal said. It, it depends on your situation, how bad all things are. Um, so just kind of be patient with yourself and, and just keep at it. Awesome. All right. I think we're coming to the tail end. AD uh, Keto says hello, What's Aaron. Up? He said, Cruising, you need to be here next year, Aaron. So you can go, Happy Monday. <laughs> Did I do that good? Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> for, the, uh, for the King Distance Hiker question, Zach Bitter. Yes, we said that already. Have a fun trip. Thanks for everything, you guys. You're welcome, Keto Holic. So, guys, the bottom line this Jimmy Rants, carb ups. Do you need them? Muscle growth, hormone regulation, maybe, but maybe not. Don't buy into the hype. The hype is there. Doesn't mean you have to believe that it's true. So thank you guys for being here. Hey, Our illustrious panel, again, <laughs> Robert Sykes, Keto Savage. Keto Savage, yeah, that's me. And Crystal Sykes, mm -hmm. the Lady Savage. Yep. And Lauren Berryhill, Keto Coach yeah. Lauren. And the beautiful, the lovely, the talented, the I hope she knows I'm sucking up to her, Christine Moore, NTP, rebooting your nutrition. And, of course, I'm Jimmy Moore at Living Low Carb Man. So that's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. AD Keto says next year, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And I want you to say it that way, for sure.
Uh, uh, JimmyRance.com is the website. Go follow me over on Instagram at LivinLowCarbMan, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content, just like all these beautiful people did here today. Love you, kids. You're awesome, says Low Carb New Yorker. Uh, if you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for, for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, you will need to go over to YouTube. That's where we pop all the past episodes. Although, don't go there like right on this one because Jimmy's on cruise. And it sucks the Wi-Fi here, so we're going to wait till we get home to upload all these videos. But YouTube and type in Jimmy Ranch, you'll find the show. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show is in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Ranch podcast on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRance.com. One last time from the crowd. And the crowd goes wild. And Christine, you get the last look. Say something Bye. profound. Bye. 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 <laughs>